record a word of that. You're okay. All right, guys, here we go. Partial pressures in gas mixtures. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this theoretically, and then we're going to ascribe a little bit of math to it. Oh, you know what? Let's grab our EP sheets too. We're going to need these, and let's make sure. Oh, good. All right. Jessica, do you need one? Do you, do you seriously? Does anybody need one? Doug, you're sort of taking the place of Brandon, Jessica's brother, which isn't bad. Anyone else? You bet. You have two. Wait, is this mine? It was in your notebook. I'll assume. Here, have two. Oh, I love that Emmy just pulled that paper out of Elisha's notebook and Elisha's response was, is that mine? <laughs> no, people have been mysteriously hiding their stuff. <laughs> I know, it's been a long time. Okay, so guys, this is the conversation that we're going to have today. Um, and, and if you want to draw this to bring us back, you're welcome to do that. Um, but we've talked about this Erlenmeyer flask. And in this Erlenmeyer flask, we're going to have a stopper. And in this Erlenmeyer flask, we'll just represent it with colors. We're going to have a couple gases. And we'll do one red, and we'll do one blue. And let's say the volume of this Erlenmeyer flask uh, let's use an easier number. This is a big Erlenmeyer flask. Let's say it's a liter. I know. I know. So, guys, the question then becomes this. I, I, wanna, I want you to appreciate the logic and the simplicity, and then we can get into the math. But let's, let's understand before we put, put finger to calculator. So guys, let's say that this flask does in fact have the volume of a liter, uh, minus the stopper and all the things we've talked about. There's a liter of space inside this flask for the gas to occupy. So guys, if that's the case, what is then the volume of the blue gas? It's one liter. What then would be the volume of the red gas? Also one liter. So guys, when we talk about volumes, we're comfortable with the idea that the volume of each one of those gases is, in fact, the volume of the container. So you guys feel uncomfortable with that? Is that okay? Please. Uh-huh. Well, yes. I mean, understand, and it, it's, well, I don't want to get too much into this. Um, what's the name of what you just did? Um, the guy on Veritasium did a really cool video on this. Um, it's called like principle by extremes. Are you guys familiar with that idea? Is that what it is, Mark? It's something like that. So, yeah, so, so guys, there's a, there's a principle that you'll learn, especially as you get deeper into physics. Uh, especially in physics, because physics can be so counterintuitive. But the, 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 the Veritasium video went like this. Um, if you're sitting in a rowboat, and if you're holding a, a lead weight, and if you throw that lead weight overboard, will the boat rise, fall, or stay in the same place? Um, and the answer is very counterintuitive. To be honest with you, I don't even remember what the answer is. Um, but in order to reason to the answer, and it was a little more, oh, no, 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 that wasn't actually it. Sorry, let's start again. That, that wasn't the question. Let me, because we're talking about it, let's do it again. The question was this. You're in a rowboat, 
in a swimming pool and you're holding a lead weight and you mark the height of the water on the edge of the swimming pool, then you drop the lead weight into the pool, will the level of water in the pool go up, down, or stay the same? And we're not going to get into the answer, but the reason, Jessica, I bring this up is, is, is in order to, to reason to the answer, um, what he did was he, it, it's called like reasoning by extremes. And so he said, rather than take a lead weight, what if you took a grain of sand? And what if you drop that in? And then what if you took a boulder? and drop that in. Because sometimes if you can't make sense of it relative to one example, if you can think about examples that are extreme, you can then take the principles and apply them back to the other example. So with that said, your question was, what if you had one molecule? That's an extreme. It's, I mean, that's a vacuum for all intensive purposes, right? The, the thought being, you'll never get there. That's an extreme that isn't even worth talking about because it's so extreme. What we can say is this, regardless of how much gas is in there, in terms of particles, moles, regardless of how many particles are in there, unless we've got so many particles that they're so packed together that they're behaving non-ideally, um, we say that the volume of the gas is the volume of the container. Is that okay? So guys, are we okay with that idea? The volume of the gas is the volume of the container. You good? Here's the new idea. Pressure. So let's say the pressure of the container is three atmospheres. What's the pressure of the red gas? We don't know. What's the pressure of the blue gas? We don't know. But what do we know? they add up to three. And so if we had the same number of particles, and that's why I said we don't know. I mean, is it the same number of particles? How many red do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Is it really? One, two, three. Uh, look at me go. OK. So guys, let's say that. Let's say that the number of blue and the number of red are the same. What then is the pressure of the red gas? 1.5, and the blue gas is 1.5. Now, the question is, how do we know? And this is what we're going to talk about conceptually, and then we're going to tease out mathematically. But guys, what could we do to verify that that's the case? How could we do that mathematically? How could we demonstrate, and we can gather more information as we need, but guys, how could we demonstrate that those pressures are the same? Pivner. So guys, can I write down here? Is that out of view? Is that OK? You know what? Let me go up here. So if I go Pivnert, R is constant, right? But now we're talking about two different samples of gas, red gas and blue gas. So guys, what do we know about the volume of red gas compared to blue gas? Let me change colors. What do I know about those volumes? They're the same. So those are constant. They're the same. What do I know about the temperature of the red gas and blue gas? They are the same. Now, guys, what do I know about the number of particles of red gas and blue gas? They happen to be six. But remember, number, the small n number of moles is simply a number of particles. And it doesn't matter if it's six or 6,000 or 6 trillion or 6 moles. It doesn't matter. They're the same. And so the temperatures and the volumes are the same because they're in the same container. The number of moles is the same because we happen to draw it that way. Therefore, if we do the math, we know the pressures are the same. And we also know they add up to 3. And as a result, we can say that, that x plus y is equal to 3. Well, it's actually x plus x is equal to 3 because they're the same pressures. So each one is 1.5. Does that make sense? Is that OK? You guys settled with that idea? OK, now what if we do this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now let's say the pressure, and we're starting over. You guys understand that if I did, in fact, inject more blue gas, the pressure would go up, right? Because as moles goes up, pressure goes up. That's But let's say that we're starting over, and now we have this system. 
and now you don't need to count. There's twice as much blue as red. So, guys, what is the volume of the blue gas? What's the volume of the red gas? Now what are their pressures? And that's the thing that's interesting here, guys. We do actually know the pressures. The reason we know the pressures is we know that the total pressure actually adds up to three. But we also know this. We have a one to two mole ratio. We have one mole of red and we have two moles of blue, 12 to 6, right? And here then is the big idea. If we've got twice as much gas, its pressure will be twice as much. That's the new big idea today. So guys, the idea goes like this. Red gas, blue gas. Join me back at Pivner. Red gas, blue gas. Are the temperatures still the same? Yes. Are the volumes still the same? Yes. But are the moles still the same? No. But they are proportional still to pressure. So if we have twice as many moles, won't we also have twice the pressure as the red gas? So what we know then is if we have a 1 to 2 mole ratio, we also have a 1 to 2 pressure ratio. And if they add up to 3, then we know the red gas would be 1 atmosphere and the blue gas would be 2. Does that make sense? So guys, what if the pressure was 6 atmospheres? Then what's the pressure of the red gas? 2. And the pressure of the blue gas is 4 but they're always proportional. And guys, those are the things that we're going to explore today. So what we now know is that in a, what we've agreed on, what we knew before, is that in a container, we assign the volume of the gas to the volume of the container, regardless of how many gases are in there. But now we know pressure, excuse me, and that is not the case. The pressures are additive and also proportional to numbers of moles. So the, the number of moles of gas is proportional to the pressure of that gas in the mixture. And guys, you're going to find out in a minute that is what is called a partial pressure. So coming back to our three atmosphere example, we would say the partial pressure of the red gas is one atmosphere. The partial pressure of the blue gas is two atmospheres, and therefore the total pressure is three atmospheres. Does that make sense? Okay, so guys, you are not going to learn anything else for the rest of the day until the very end. So what we're going to do is we are going to mathematize everything that we just said. We're going to mathematize this idea that pressures are additive. We're going to mathematize the idea that pressures and numbers of moles are proportional. We're going to turn those into equations. Then there's one last thing we're going to do, and that's going to be the day. You guys ready to go? Can we get into it? Okay. So, guys, it goes then like this. So, uh-oh. Here then is what we know, and I would encourage you to be judicious with the notes that you take. Um, but guys, let's dig into this. Where's my clicker? Here we go. All right, so guys, it goes like this. So we understand this, and I don't even know if you need to write it down, but you can if you want. But if you're writing this down and you're thinking to yourself, really? Then we need to talk. So. The total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each would exert on its own. So pressures are additive. Now guys, let's make sure we're clear. What if we went back through this sentence and everywhere the word pressure appears, what if we replaced it with the word volume? Is it still true? No. Volumes are not additive, pressures are. And guys, we write it this way. But I would encourage you to not write this down. Let's do it. I don't think this is the way it is on the AP. Oh, it is. Never mind. Write this down. Um, so guys, but let's find it on the AP sheet. It's, so I'm on the page four side, underneath gases, liquids, and solutions. Uh, third equation down. You got it there, right? 
P total is PA plus PB plus PC plus dot, 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 meaning what? Just keeps going. But you guys also understand it doesn't have to be three. It could be two. It could be red and blue. Um, but it still holds. So guys, are we comfortable with this idea of pressures being additive? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transition into this idea that if pressures are additive, there's a relationship between that and moles. I don't know that you need to write this down, but guys, this is the idea. Please stop and think before you just blindly write. So guys, here's what we know. We know pivnert, right? And if we solve pivnert for pa, we end up with nert over va, right? So we solve that for p. And then, guys, what we can do is we can plug this in. So if pressure total is pressure plus pressure plus pressure, but if pressure is equal to nRT divided by V, everywhere we've got a pressure, we can plug that in. You get the idea? But you'll notice what we did. This is the number of moles of A, the number of moles of B, the number of moles of C. Some of you see where this is going. So guys, if this sample of gas, as before, if this sample of gas is all in the same container, and it has to be for this to be true, guys, if this sample of gas is all in the same container, then what do you know about the temperatures and the volumes of all of those individual gases? Did that make sense? Did, I probably didn't ask that very well. So guys, imagine this is our red gas and our blue gas, and then maybe we added another gas. But what do you know about the temperature and the volume of red gas and blue gas? They're the same. Same temperature, because they're in the same room, and they're in contact with each other. And same volume, because they're in the same container, right? So guys, what that allows us then to do is this. Oh, where did it go? Oh, I'm sorry, I took out the animation. Just a second. So guys, what that allows us to do then is this. We can then cancel the R's and the T's and the V's off of all of these. <clears throat> no, 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 no. So we're, well, sort of. So what, what we're saying, you're right, mathematically that's true. But what we're saying, yeah, we're kind of factoring it and then just ignoring it rather than really canceling it. But what we're saying is the T's and the V's in all of these are constant. So if we were to go through, you understand we can't get rid of the R's, the T's, and the V's and still cancel and still calculate total pressure. But what we can do is acknowledge that here and here and here these are equal. And because they're equal across all of the samples that make up the mixture, what we can see then is that the total pressure of the system is, e is proportional, not equal, because we can't truly factor that out, but it's proportional to those numbers of moles. So as the number of moles of any of these goes up, the pressure goes up proportionally because, well, you're right, they're not cancelable, but they are consistent throughout. Does that, does that, and so mathematically what you said is more correct. But do you understand the concept here, guys? That because the R's, the T's, and the V's are all proportional to each, are all the same, then we have a proportionality between the number of moles and the pressure, which, guys, is simply what we talked about back here. The idea, if we know the total pressure and if we know the ratio of particles, we then know the pressure ratios as well because they're proportional to each other. Is that OK? Does that, does that sit? OK. So guys, with that said, what I did initially is I made up a fun little thing to play with. Um, but I don't know how much fun it's going to be now. Because um, what you can actually, this is basically our, our Erlenmeyer flask all tied back together. So the idea is if we've got, and this is 
kind of hard to do. Uh, but guys, if we've got our red gas and if we've got our blue gas, and if these are, say, they're one liter containers, we understand that this has the volume of a liter, this has the volume of a liter. But when we mix them together, the pressure goes up, but it goes up proportionally. You know what we're talking about. So the idea here is um, if we knew that there's twice as many blue as red, and if we knew the pressure was three, it'd be one atmosphere of red and two. It's basically what we did with your own Meyer flask, just with silly things to play with. You guys comfortable with the idea? Okay. You? This is more fun, though, I guess. Whee! All right, never mind. All right, so guys, that then leads, <laughs> sorry. That then leads us to be able to answer questions like this. Let's do this together. Well, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. So it says you've got a sample of gas and it's collected over water. And this is where this starts to sound familiar, right? At the time of the collection, the water bath had a temperature of 23 and the atmospheric pressure was this. What is the pressure of the collected gas? By moles, what percentage of the gas is water vapor and what percentage is the gas collected? You see how this is tying back to the stuff that we talked about earlier with collection over water? But now we've got an additional new thought. So guys, I think this is gonna be, even though this feels initially perhaps redundant, I think it's gonna be worth solving this because the last part of this is new. So, um, do we, would it be helpful to draw a picture before we dig in? Because this whole draw pictures thing, um, please, when you get to the AP test or even unit tests, I, I'm a picture drawer. I need to be able to see it before I can solve it. So if this is helpful for you, and heaven knows, you know I'm a horrible artist, so I'm just going to chicken scratch this thing. But I've got something like this. I know I'm collecting gas over water. And what I know is the water is 23 degrees and the atmospheric pressure is 644 millimeters of mercury. And then it's asking me, what is the pressure of the gas collected? So guys, now we need to talk about the gas collected. So what's up there inside of that tube? There's gas and water. So we're going to just call the gas, gas, and then we've also got water vapor. So what is the pressure of the water vapor? We don't know. What's the pressure of the gas? We don't know. But what do we know? They add up to 644. So guys, with that information, what do we need to know to then find the pressure of the gas? Yeah, are any guys, you guys probably even can get to this quicker than me. I'll just get it for you. Um, so guys, remember to get that information, we go back to the partial pressure table. Or remember, tori millimeters of mercury are the same, and it's 21.07. So the pressure at 23 degrees is 21.07 tor. So guys, you solve the problem in its entirety. Are you done? That's good. So let's fiddle with this. So 
we understand that the gas that's up there inside of that tube, and probably technically, if you were to see this on the AP test, they don't thing that assures that the gas is equal to atmospheric pressure. But what we do know is this, that the pressure total inside that tube is equal to the pressure of gas A plus the pressure of gas B, which is the equation we just looked at. But then we know that this is 644 uh, torr. And it doesn't really matter which one we call gas A. So let's call gas A our gas. And then gas B will be our water, which is 21.07 torr. And embarrassingly, I don't even want to mess around to figure this out. What's the math work out to? 22.93. Is that right? OK. So guys, we understand the application. We understand the process, right? But now we're going to stretch this into this new idea that we had. So guys, let's call, uh, let, let's just, oh, yeah, OK. Let's call this 21. And let's, wait, oh yeah, that's right. Let's call, would that then be 623? If we called that 21, yeah. And let's call this 623. That'll make our math a little bit more straightforward. So guys, imagine this. Imagine if, so this is our water. And imagine if we made water red. And then imagine, yep, and then imagine that this is our gas and imagine that we made this gas green. Okay? Now imagine this. Imagine if we put 644 dots inside there. How many of those dots would be red? How many of them would be our red water? 21. How many of those dots would be green? 623. Guys, the idea here scales. Remember, we talked about this idea that if we know the pressure, it's proportional to the number of dots which is representative of number of moles, right? Well, guys, the same thing is also true here. We still enjoy, if you will, those pressure mole relationships. So here's what we now know. And I'm going to pick a color that really kind of, uh, all right, where is it? Violet. OK, so guys, here's what we know, 21 of the 644 pressure units is attributed to the water. So let's do that as a percentage. 21 divided by 644. So that would be, I'm going to go round numbers, 3.3%. Then 623 divided by 644, just making sure this works. I know it does, but yep. And then 97%, is that wrong? Oh, I meant to just write three down over there. Can you give it to me? So we got 3% and 97%. But what does that ratio represent? What kind, of, what kind of percentages? What kind of ratio is that? It's a pressure percentage, right? Those are, at, those are TOR. So that is a percentage by a pressure percentage. So 3% of the pressure comes from the water. 97% of the pressure comes from our sample gas. But it doesn't stop there, does it? What if we have, what if the total number of moles in here is one mole? 
if there's one total mole of gas inside that container, how many moles of water are there? 0.03 moles. And how many moles of gas are there? 0.97 moles. And guys, that's the important thing that you need to understand is that those pressure ratios are also mole ratios. Those pressure ratios are also mole ratios. So if 3% of the pressure comes from the water, then 3% of the moles must be water. And if 97% of the pressure is the gas, then 97% of that mixture must be gas molecules by particles or moles. Those interchange. You okay with the concept? You get the idea? Because we're about to flip it backwards. You guys okay with the idea? Okay. Now, guys, imagine this. You ready? Check this out. I'm going to switch colors again. Going yellow. Guys, imagine now you know this. The total pressure is 644 torr. So imagine that you came into this problem and you knew the total pressure was 644 torr, and you knew that this gas was 3% water by moles. Could you figure out the pressure of the water? How? 3% of 644. But wait, this is a moles percentage, and that's a pressure. Same thing. They're the same ratios. So guys, if you know the total pressure of a gas, guys, don't miss this. This is our last big idea. If you know the pressure of the gas, and if you know the percentage that is that gas in a mixture, if you know the percentage that is that gas by moles, it's also the pressure ratio. So if it's 3% water by moles, it's also contributing 3% of the pressure, and 3% of that would bring you back to the 21 torr. You get the idea? There's an equation that allows us to do that. And guys, it looks like this. Ready? See this right here? That fraction, 21 over 644? That is what is called a mole fraction. Don't write anything down, just listen. This is what is called a mole fraction. This number in the bottom is representative of the total mixture. This amount in the top, because remember amounts and pressures are proportional, this number on top is representative of whatever component of the mixture we're looking at. And this thing, guys, is what we call a mole fraction, which we can then use to figure out pressure, partial pressures of gases. And guys, it goes like this. If all of that seemed confusing, track through this with me. Don't write any of this down. But here's the idea. So guys, these gas mixtures behave independently. So there is a ratio between amount and partial pressure, right? If we have an amount ratio, 3% and 97%, that is both a pressure ratio and a mole ratio. Was that a better way to say that? Do you understand what we're saying? The previous, this. So this thing that we just looked at, that 3% and 97%, is both an amount ratio, that's moles, and a pressure ratio. They're the same. And so guys, because that's true, what we can do then is this. We can take again Pivnert and solve it for pressure, and then we can do this. Because pressure ratios and mole ratios are the same, here's what we can do. Here's a gas A, and here's the total gas. So this could be red or blue or whatever. It could be water. It could be our sample gas. Doesn't matter. This is the gas that we're studying, and this is our total gas. So maybe this is our 21 torr. Sorry, let me choose a better picture, better color. So maybe this is our 21 torr of water, and this is our 644 total torr. Is that okay? Does that bring it back better? But then, guys, that ratio also extends to this side. 
and now again we can actually cancel and what we can do is we can drop those out because the R's, the T's, and the V's are now actually the same, right? And that then leaves us, oh gosh, with that, which is our mole ratio. And guys, that mole ratio has a name. So this then is what you want to write down. I know you're trying to get this in your notes. But guys, this then is what you need to get in your notes, this relationship. But guys, if you understand what this is saying, all it's telling us is this. It's telling us that this 3%, 97% is both a pressure ratio and a mole ratio, right? The pressure ratio and the mole ratio is in fact equal. That's all this equation is saying. That if you know the ratio of pressures, you know the ratio of moles. If you know the ratio of moles, you know the ratio of pressures. Don't let the math detract from what you already know. Pressure ratios and mole ratios are the same. Is that okay? Okay, so guys, with that said, this thing is equal to x. This dude right here, this ratio, this fraction, is actually equal to x. So here's what we do. We set this thing equal to x, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with x. So maybe that's what you want to do in your notes. So what we end up with then is this. So this thing, Na divided by N total, is what is called the mole ratio. It's just the total number of moles and then the number of moles of your sample on top. And we call that X. And so when we replace it, we end up with this. And it says X, which is the mole ratio, is equal to the partial pressure of what you're studying divided by the total pressure. But then guys, what we're going to do is solve this equation for this. And what do you end up with? So if we solve for this, how do we solve that for PA? Just multiply. And guys, we end up with this. PA is equal to X times P total. And you're going, holy smokes, this is ridiculous, right? But guys, do this with me. Don't let this freak you out. I'm going to rewrite this so you can see. PA is equal to XA times P total. So ready? Let's do this. So we want to know the pressure of the water. We know the total pressure. Oops, sorry. We know... that the water was 21 divided by 640 force and that the total pressure was um, 644 tor. And in this weird example, it cancels. But guys, that's all we're talking about is if you know the ratio of moles, so some number of ratio, your sample to the total, and if you know the pressure of the thing that you're studying, you can multiply those together and get the pressure of the thing that you're looking at. So if you know the total pressure, and if you know the mole fraction, which is not technically what that was initially, um, you can find the pressure of, of the thing you're studying. Yeah. No, and that's the thing. It doesn't, because it's moles divided by moles, it cancels. So guys, let me show you another example of that. Let's solve this. This is actually real stuff. So Voyager 1 send that thing out. Did you guys see that that other planetary explorer, the one that figured out that Pluto's not really a planet, it actually just encountered like this like weird planet-like thing that looks like a snowman that's like 8 billion miles from here out in like the Kuiper Belt where all of the asteroids, did you guys see this? Amazing. Yeah, it's the most distant like object that we've ever studied like up close. 
It's 8 billion miles away. And the satellite that got there that's studying this thing, it's going to take like 20 months for it to send all of the data back that it collected as it went past this thing. The pictures are really cool. Anyway, so. So it says, for data gathered by Voyager, scientists have determined that the composition of the atmosphere of Titan, which is actually interesting, it's a moon of Saturn, um, and what they figured out is the total pressure on the moon is this. So guys, higher or lower than Earth? Yeah, the pressure on this moon is actually significantly higher than atmospheric pressure here, because atmospheric pressure here is 760. So they, if you could get a five mole sample of this atmosphere, um, and, they've, and they've done this, actually. They have analytic things. They figured out that this atmosphere, uh, for every five moles, is 4.10 uh, moles nitrogen, uh, 0 .0, 0 0.6 moles argon, and 0.3 moles of CH4. And then the question is, what is the partial pressure of these gases on Titan? So guys, if we can do it for one, we can do it for the rest. So why don't we figure out, what is the partial pressure of nitrogen? on Titan. So how do we do it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get our equation that says pressure of nitrogen is equal to the mole fraction of nitrogen times the pressure total. That's our equation, just refining it for nitrogen. Then guys, we still want to know the pressure of the nitrogen. Now we need to know the mole fraction of the nitrogen. So that would be 4.10 moles that's the number of moles of nitrogen, but there are five total moles. Then the pressure total is 1220 torr. And guys, that's all there is to it. So we know that we have 4.1 divided by 5. So that means 82% of that atmosphere by moles. You do that math, it's 82%. 82% of that atmosphere by moles is nitrogen. That also means that 82% of the pressure is from the nitrogen. So you take that 0.82, multiply it by 1220, and rounding somewhat, you get 1,000 torr. So the pressure of the nitrogen in that atmosphere would be 1,000 torr because the mole ratio is proportional to the pressure ratio. What do you think? We okay? Okay. So guys, let me uh, slide some homework your way. Looks like this. And that is going to do us.